my name is Sarah Brewster. I share my testimony for the purpose of glorifying the Lord and pointing others toward him. In the account of Luke, a man who had been healed of demon possession by Jesus was told by our Lord, return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. Through my walk in life, God has been so faithful, merciful, present, and good. And I hope that you'll see these qualities of his character amplified through the story he has given me. I grew up in West Virginia. I lived in a valley with a creek in the center, my uncle on the other side of the creek, and my paternal grandfather a little bit above my uncle. I grew up super close to my older sisters who are about 13 and 14 years older than me. My sisters were the ones that took the initiative in sharing the gospel with me and making sure I was fed from the, the word of God at a local church. I remember my older sister Valerie doing Bible studies with me, seeing her write in her prayer journal, and seeing both of my sisters baptized. I have a vague memory of praying with one of my sisters to receive Jesus at a young age. My sister Valerie was the first to get me involved in a local church, but when she moved away when I was in fourth grade, my sister Julie tells me that she felt a need to take the lead in getting me, getting me involved in a body of believers, and she did just that. The distance of the church Julie first got me plugged into was a bit far, so she decided to try, or try to find a congregation a bit closer. A neighbor who lived at the top of our valley had previously taken my older sisters when they were little to the VBS at his church. And this, this church came to Julie's mind and away we went. I, I loved this church and it truly felt like home to me. And this is where I would say I formed a foundation in my faith. Centrifuge, a camp I went to while I was in youth group was a really monumental um, event in my life. It caused a greater fire within me concerning my faith. I remember telling people all the time um, when I was in middle school that Jesus loved them. And I remember epically fumbling um, while trying to share Jesus with my peers while I was in school. After graduating high school, I started going to another local body of believers and getting involved in a campus ministry at the college I attended. This is where I met my husband, Jonathan, and during this transitional time from high school to college, I felt compelled to serve and pour into those younger than me, pointing them to Christ, which led me to serve at a parachurch ministry with middle school students for a portion of my time in college. After college, Jonathan and I got married. I wanted to marry a man that sought to love Christ more than me, and Jonathan truly points me to Jesus and reminds me of God's love for me, and I'm so, so thankful to the Lord for him. Walking alongside Jonathan, supporting him as he's walked in ministry has been a blessing. We've been married for seven years, which is really hard to believe, and through marriage, Jonathan and I have transitioned through jobs, different hopes, times of waiting, times of grief, and times of joy. Jonathan and I are so glad that the Lord has placed us here at Burlington Baptist. We adore our church family, and I've truly seen myself grow more in my walk with the Lord due to the faithful teaching and leadership that I've been under. My hope in my walk with Jesus is to continue growing, growing more in love with the Lord, faithfully serving him, and ultimately being conformed more into his image. And my walk with the Lord has not always been perfect or easy. In childhood, I began, I began struggling with something called obsessive compulsive disorder. This struggle has impacted every aspect of my life. When I was little, I remember being scared of all sorts of things, things that many might not consider typical, like that I was going to blaspheme the Holy Spirit, give Satan my soul, or harm others. I would pray over and over again to be saved for fear that I really wasn't saved, and I remember feeling really alone. I went to a conference with my youth group, and during a fun break time, a college skit group got up to lead us in a big game of charades, and one of the um, words to guess was OCD. This made me feel really sad and misunderstood. I recall meeting with my pastor to try to explain to him and his wife that I was afraid I was worshiping Satan during Sunday service. Fun meeting, right? Um, when I got to college, the fears transformed into, can I correctly share the gospel? What if these kids I'm leading don't hear it just right? I would go to work at Old Navy 
in fear that I rung up someone's clothes on the cash register too many times, so I'd count their clothes while trying to act normal. One time my manager caught me. This struggle of OCD has continued to be a fight for me and can be dark and scary. This can be a really hard topic to discuss for fear of what others might think, but I want others to know that life with Jesus doesn't mean a life free of struggle. I truly can't imagine a life without the Lord. Although life with Jesus is hard, life without him is impossible. He gives me firm assurance, purpose, and I know that ultimately I'm not alone. And if this thorn of OCD remains in my life, I know that in the end there is healing when I meet the Lord. I'm going to continue chasing after him. I'm thankful that even as I run, when I fall, his grace covers me. So instead of rolling in the guilt like a muddy pig, I can get back up with my eyes on him. It's so easy to get distracted in, the, in this world, to look to feelings to lead me, to not prioritize time with him, to go grow complacent of the gospel. And oh, what a fool I can be, but oh, how so thankful I am for his faithfulness and mercy. He is good, and whenever I doubt his goodness, I go back to the cross where I see that he gave his life for me and didn't abandon me. And I'd like to end by reading a psalm that I have found great comfort in, Psalm 42. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all the day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God, with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down on my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. My soul is cast down within me, therefore I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Mazar. Deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls. All your breakers and your waves have gone over me. By day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me, while they say to me all the day long, where is your God? Why are you cast down on my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. I hope my testimony was an encouragement to you. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.